Hello everybody, Douglas Waltz, Old Man Comic Book Reviews. We've been doing a lot of these, like close to a year. Who would have thunk it, right? We have a large stack, so let's get to it. First up, I've been ranting and raving about the Dune books. They did a Dune spin-off book uh, called Blood of the Sardaukar. Written by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, illustrated by Adam Gorham. And it's a one-shot. It's also freaking huge and it cost eight bucks. Well, $7.99. Minus my discount, it wasn't that much. So the side of card, the Emperor's Troops. This basically tells the story of a guy who's part of the side of car and how he had dealings with um, the House of Trades and it wasn't what he thought it was. And then he does a thing at the end that happens in the books uh, where they get away because of a bad shot. And it was him that did the bad shot. They have given away the ending. But if you read Dune, you know. And this was kind of a waste of seven bucks. Eight bucks. It wasn't, you know what I mean? It's good. I'm glad I got it. But it was nothing to the backstory as far as I needed it. I didn't need it. It was really just kind of... That's why I don't read any of the ones that weren't written by Frank Herbert. Let's move on. <laughs> Shang-Chi 3, can you tell who he's fighting? Look, it's Wolverine! And I don't think he actually fights. Oh no, he does fight Wolverine in here. They get, they don't get along. And our writer is Gene Lun Young. Artist, it's D-I-K-E. Dike, Dike. That doesn't sound right. I think Dike might be right. Ruhan, R-U-A-N. And they are off to see the, oh, what is she called? She's a, uh, one of the, the houses, one of the households, and um, there was the, one of them was supposed to kill her, and she's like a witch, but she's not actually a witch. She's the house of the deadly staff, and Fu Manchu wanted her dead, and the one guy that was supposed to do it did not, and he cut off a piece of her long flute that she has that she controls energy with. And come to find out, the Lake Witch is actually a mutant. So guess who shows up? They say, no, no, you cannot have her. And so there's a big fight. Wolverine fights Shang-Chi, and, and, you know, at the end she goes with them to uh, set her house in order. And next time, they're doing something weird. Next month is called Marvel Voices Identity Number One. It's all of the Asian superheroes in the Marvel Universe, short stories. After that, Shang-Chi versus uh, the Fantastic Four. We'll see how that goes for him. I just hope they don't cancel the book when the movie comes out. And they'll be like, oh, well, the movie's out. We don't need the book anymore. Keep it. All right, off to Vault with issue three of one of the strangest comic books we have. The Blue Flame. Christopher Cantwell's writer. Adam Gorham is the artist. Gorham. Why does that sound like this guy? Hold on. Okay, so the guy who drew this also draws the Blue Flame. Busy little monkey. All right, and it's half and half. There's the uh, the team of superheroes that all got murdered in the small town, um, and so he's dealing with that. He just goes and gets drunk and takes his pain pills. While he's doing that, the other blue flame is trying to save humanity. I'm not sure who the actual real blue flame is at this point, and. I'm kind of confused as to what's going on. It's back and forth, back and forth. So we just don't know what's going on. The one guy is a train wreck. Barely functional. Drinks, takes his pain pills. The other guy is off on another planet trying to tell people that we should not be uh, destroyed. So we'll see how it goes next Next month. is the It shows the helmet being shattered with the reflection of the trash fire version of the blue flame. I don't know why there's two blue flames. They're not telling us a lot. So, it's still a good book. I like to be uh, confused from time to time. So, issue 32 of Daredevil. Look, see, there's Bullseye. There's Electra Devil. That's what I'm calling her. Matt is still in prison. 
Chip Zdarsky is still writing it. Mike Hawthorne is the penciler. Adriano De Benedito. I hope that I got that one right. Um, so I do like her costume. I like her, her electric costume a lot. But um, they are using Bullseye as like a COVID threat. He's basically decided that he is killing New York City. One person at a time. And so you don't know when, you don't know where, no rhyme, no reason. And um, Kingpin and Typhoid Mary have a moment where he says, I need you to stay with me. He, she, she makes him ask, so that's not a thing. Spider-Man shows up because he knows that Electra Devil, is looking for Bullseye. He's mildly concerned because she's pretending to be Daredevil, who's a superhero. But Bullseye killed her once. And Electra's known to hold a grudge. So, and meanwhile, Matthew is in prison, Daredevil. He is, um, they try to kill him in prison. That doesn't go well for them. He's pretty much running the show in prison. They just don't know it yet. So, he's going after the bad guys. The interesting thing is you get your big, the big showdown. Here comes Electra Devil. Here comes Bullseye. They're going at it. Bullseye said he's going to kill everybody and it's okay so you have preconceived notions about daredevil daredevil bullseye things like that the last page which i will not ruin for anybody throws all of that in the trash in a good way you're like what is going on here all right so the missus said we need to have Gru meets tarzan what if you notice there's two different artworks going on here we have um Thomas Yates doing Tarzan, and Sergio Argonez, as always, doing Gru. I don't know what to make of this book. The best part of oh, Mark Evanier writes it. The opening panels, the opening, oh, let me see, five, six pages, is Mark Evanier and Sergio Argonez at Comic-Con. Sergio drew this for us so we can see Comic-Con. But it's them talking about doing the story. Um, Tarzan meets Gru. And then the Tarzan art looks gorgeous. So he did a great job. Um, I don't have to say what Gru looks like. And Gru, they're trying to convince him to look for the world's best cheese dip. So they all keep, each village is like, no, no, not here. you got to go over here. So eventually I imagine that means that the two will meet. And it puts the, the artwork back and forth. One minute you're Gru, the next minute you're Tarzan. And... Never the two will meet. And Sergio, in the in his part of it, thinks he's going to draw Tarzan. So I don't know how that's going to happen. He wants to go to this big game uh, preserve, which the Chula Vista Jungle Safari Land, which basically is like the slum of, of wildlife parks. This they never get out of the car. Sergio has his BB gun to look like a big game hunter. Gets out of the car. That's a lion. That's the end of the first book. So those parts of it are very funny. I have no idea what they're going to do with Gru and Tarzan. Um, because it's Gru meets Tarzan, there's Tarzan, there's Gru. The next issue, it's literally, they just changed poses. It's the same exact thing, so we'll, we'll see what goes on. We'll, we'll see. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, well, let's do this one. Yeah, let's do that one last. Wonder Woman. Still overpriced because they won't get rid of the Young Adventures. Nope. Pete, Adventures of Young Diana, which I heard getting its own book, so that'll get rid of about uh, that much comic book. And maybe they'll take the dollar off, get it back to three ninety nine. So last issue, Wonder Woman, that's a pretty picture, who uh, jumped in a well with her friend Ratatastic, Ratatastic, the rat, the squirrel. Um, so let me get the small print here. Written by Michael W. Conrad and Becky Cloonan. Art by um, Jill Thompson for pages 1 through 20. I do love Jill Thompson artwork. I'll show you why in a minute. And then Becky Cloonan, who's the writer, um, did pencils and inks for pages 21 and 22. And you can tell. I mean, because they go to Fairyland. And let me see if I can find a good... Really good picture of Thompson's artwork because it her, she likes to keep things busy. Her panels move around a lot. She is not doing a bunch of splash 
pages or anything like that. I mean, there, there, there you go. See, just, just gorgeous, just gorgeous stuff. So, anyway, they're in Fairyland, and they are wrongly accused of something. Um, she's got the lasso, and I thought it was the magic lasso. But this one talks to her, and then it tells the truth. I don't think I like the magic lasso talking. So, at the end, she takes her friend Radistock and Siegfried. See? He calls him Siggy, which is awful. Um, and then they go back to New York. Now we'll take a brief cut while our camera person dies. We're back! It's magic! Final book. Black Knight. Curse of the Ebony Blade. Five out of five. So, last issue, Mordred had taken the uh, all of the stuff to make the Ebony Crown. And he wanted to hotwire the Ebony Crown. So he made an act. Listener, which is the word listen with an R after it, like Tumblr or whatever. What it does is it's an app on your phone that you can spill your guts to about your terrible, terrible life. And all that negative energy goes into the Ebony Crown. And if you're like that, you become one of his slaves, basically. Um, this is a great last book. We get a twist that I didn't see coming. He explains that like that girl that's been in the book with Dane this whole time. Um, we have uh, Elsa Bloodstone back. Mordred tries really hard to be the bad guy. Dane won't let him. And in the end, there is a new order to things. There's Black Knight is a title, not a person. So, can you have more than one Black Knight at a time? Absolutely. But I won't tell you who the other Black Knight is, because that would be giving it away. So, next up they're going to do... They said to hear that the Black Knights will return, so I'm excited about that. They'll put the trade paper back in after that. Pretty much going forward, this was my last mini-series from Marvel, because they do the same thing. It's $3.99 minus my discount for five issues. So... We'll just do roundup things. So we'll call it four bucks. Four times five is twenty. Even with my discount, you know, a couple bucks. So that's what the, that's what it is if it's an individual issue. Now, if I know they're doing a five issue miniseries, I will be waiting, and we will review the trade paper back together. So that could be longer, but I don't care. I'm tired because the trade paperbacks are going for fifteen ninety nine, and I'll get them discounted on the first day. So that's like three bucks off of that. So like twelve dollars instead of you know eighteen dollars. That's a big chunk of change. So there's a couple of them coming up. When they come up, I'll just say surprise. We have a trade paperback. Maybe we'll have a separate trade paperback episode. I haven't decided. So in the meantime, next week I don't think there's as many books. Oh, and uh, these are the books for July twenty eighth. Wow, yes, July twenty eighth. So be sure to go see a uh, local comic book store. Sophie, Fiona, I did not see you today, but I saw you yesterday. You made me swim with you in a pool for two hours. I'm bushed. So, we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.